Exactly. In other words, they're, they're committing suicide. Yeah, that's, that's exactly. It's a suicidal war. Yeah, and Zorovikin uh, invited them to do it, and that's where they've taken most of their losses against his defense. The point is that it's an existential war for Russia. They understand that now. The West is out to destroy them. They listened to Biden say that in March in Poland, yeah. uh, that he, Putin is evil, we have to have regime change. And uh, when, Putin, when Biden was asked, his handlers, I guess, had given him this answer, he says there could be no agreement on the, on the current lines. There is no compromise with evil. You know, yeah. is this, this foolish ideology. Everyone who disagrees with us is evil and must die. This is sort of stupidity in Washington. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, we delve into the intricate web of the ongoing conflict in Ukraine where strategic maneuvers and geopolitical plays are unfolding with unprecedented intensity. From NATO's controversial moves to Poland's assertive actions and the alarming rhetoric from the United States, we bring you an in-depth analysis of the current situation. Let's begin our journey into the heart of the battlefield. As Colonel Douglas McGregor has often pointed out, the situation in Eastern Europe is teetering on the edge of a major escalation. Yesterday evening, critical information surfaced about Poland's strategic maneuver in Ukraine. Poland has reportedly signed an agreement with Ukraine to establish a no-flight zone over Ukrainian territory. This development aims to counter any missile threats from Russia heading towards Poland. By late afternoon, data emerged that Poland is effectively setting up a no-flight zone within Ukraine's borders. This move is not merely defensive. It signals Poland's aggressive stance against Russian advances. With the introduction of F-16 jets into Ukraine, Poland's involvement marks a significant escalation. Their proactive stance indicates a readiness to counter any threats decisively. Both the Prime Minister and President of Poland have shown a combative attitude towards Russia, reflecting a broader NATO strategy to secure the region. This step could be the beginning of direct NATO involvement under the guise of Polish initiatives. This move by Poland is not surprising. Historically, Poland has been a fierce opponent of Russia, and this no-flight zone serves as a clear message. But let's not kid ourselves, this is not about defense. It's about provoking Russia and pulling NATO further into the conflict. As NATO's puppet, Poland is playing a dangerous game. Next, we delve into the deteriorating situation on the ground in Avdivka, where Ukrainian forces are crumbling under Russian advances. Colonel Douglas McGregor has emphasized the strategic significance of Abdivka in numerous discussions. Shifting our focus to the battlegrounds, the situation in Abdivka has been nothing short of chaotic. Ukrainian defenses are crumbling as Russian forces continue to push through with relentless force. The Ukrainian army is in disarray, retreating several kilometers each day, unable to form any substantial defensive lines. Russian troops are not just advancing, they are executing precise strikes using UAVs and loitering munitions, effectively crippling any resistance. The Ukrainian forces are left with no choice but to retreat hastily, often pursued by Russian motorcycle squads that swiftly close in on them. This rapid deterioration of Ukrainian defenses highlights the dire situation on the ground. In Abdivka, we see the clear disparity in military prowess. The Russian forces, well coordinated and equipped, are making significant gains while Ukrainian soldiers are left scrambling for their lives. This isn't just a battlefield, it's a testament to the collapsing structure of the Ukrainian military. As they fall back, unable to hold their positions, it becomes increasingly evident that NATO's support is but a temporary lifeline, failing to turn the tide. The Russian strategy in Abdivka is methodical and devastatingly effective. By targeting key Ukrainian positions and utilizing superior technology, they've managed to create a domino effect of retreat and disarray among Ukrainian forces. Meanwhile, the West continues to pour resources into a sinking ship, hoping against hope that their proxy war will yield some form of success. But as the situation stands, the Ukrainian front lines are collapsing, and with them, the Western narrative of inevitable victory. Drawing from insights by Colonel Douglas McGregor, we turn our attention to the Kharkiv border, where both sides have seen marginal gains. Russian forces have made advances in the right side buffer zones, while Ukrainian troops have pushed into areas like Lipt Sea. The back and forth struggle over these territories underscores the intense contest for control. Ukrainian advances, 
fueled by NATO support, indicate their desperation to gain any strategic advantage. However, Russia maintains a significant upper hand, regaining initiative in Kharkiv just as NATO meetings commence. This unexpected turn of events highlights the unpredictable nature of this conflict. We will continue to monitor and report on these developments as they unfold. It's interesting to see NATO's influence at play here. Ukraine's so-called advances are heavily reliant on NATO's support, yet they remain tenuous at best. Russia's swift reclamation of control in Kharkiv as NATO deliberates speaks volumes about who truly holds the power. The conflict at Kharkiv is a microcosm of the larger geopolitical struggle, one where Russia's resilience continually thwarts Western ambitions. The situation in Kharkiv is a stark reminder of the limits of Western intervention. Despite all the weapons and support funneled into Ukraine, the Russian military remains a formidable force, adapting and overcoming. The West's dream of a quick Ukrainian victory is fading fast, replaced by the harsh reality of a prolonged and costly conflict. As the battles rage on, it's becoming increasingly clear that NATO's strategy is failing, and the true cost of this conflict is yet to be fully realized. Colonel Douglas McGregor has warned about NATO's overreach in various forums. As we look beyond the immediate conflict, NATO's ambitions are becoming increasingly apparent. Secretary General Stoltenberg recently expressed concerns over Russia and China's growing influence. His statements reveal a sense of urgency and fear within NATO about their global standing. NATO's expansion efforts are no longer confined to Europe. They are actively seeking to establish a presence in Asia, setting up offices and engaging with countries like Japan and India. This strategic pivot suggests a broader agenda to counter not just Russia, but other perceived threats in the region. However, this rapid expansion comes with risks and uncertainties that NATO seems willing to overlook. This expansion is not about peace or stability. It's about dominance and control. NATO's frantic push into Asia is a desperate attempt to encircle Russia and China, projecting their influence far beyond their traditional boundaries. But the question remains. How long can they sustain this aggressive stance without overextending themselves? As we examine NATO's ambitions, it's clear that their reach might soon exceed their grasp. The irony of NATO's expansion is glaring. While they claim to promote stability, their presence often brings unrest and division. Local populations in Asia are not as welcoming as NATO might hope. Protests and resistance are growing, and the long-term impact of NATO's intrusion could be more destabilizing than stabilizing. It's a classic case of overreach, where the desire for control blinds them to the on-the-ground realities. We will continue to watch how these dynamics unfold, but the signs are clear. NATO's ambitions are a double-edged sword. Echoing the perspectives of Colonel Douglas McGregor, we turn our attention to the United States, where the rhetoric from American officials like John Kirby is both provocative and revealing. The U.S. appears committed to prolonging the conflict seeing Ukraine as a pivotal battleground against Russian forces. Kirby's statements underscore the belief that with continued American support, Ukraine can stand against one of the world's top military powers. He highlights the successes in Crimea, where Ukrainian forces, equipped with American ATACMS missiles, have inflicted significant damage on Russian military assets. However, the narrative of victory is often at odds with the grim reality on the ground where Ukrainian forces face overwhelming odds. The U.S. is playing a dangerous game, using Ukraine as a proxy to challenge Russia. Kirby's triumphant tone masks the harsh reality of a prolonged conflict, one that benefits American arms manufacturers more than it does the Ukrainian people. The promise of victory is but a mirage, luring Ukraine into a battle it cannot win. The true cost of this war is measured not in territorial gains but in human lives and shattered nations. Let's not forget the human cost of this conflict. While the U.S. celebrates so-called victories, the Ukrainian people bear the brunt of the war. Civilians are caught in the crossfire, their homes and lives destroyed. The reality on the ground is far removed from the lofty rhetoric in Washington. It's a stark reminder that for all the talk of support and solidarity, the true beneficiaries are the defense contractors and political elites, not the people on the front lines. As the conflict drags on, NATO's anxiety is palpable. In recent speeches, NATO officials have expressed increasing concern over the deepening alliance between Russia and China. 
This burgeoning partnership poses a significant challenge to NATO's global dominance. NATO's strategy to isolate Russia seems to be backfiring, pushing Russia into a closer alliance with China. This partnership strengthens both nations and presents a formidable counterbalance to NATO's ambitions. The West's attempts to weaken Russia have inadvertently created a stronger adversary. The cooperation between Russia and China extends beyond military drills. They are coordinating on economic fronts as well, creating new trade routes and financial systems independent of Western influence. This growing alliance is reshaping global geopolitics, and NATO's response has been one of increasing desperation. The alliance's frantic attempts to counter this new power bloc are evident in their erratic policies and hasty expansions. It's almost ironic. NATO's efforts to contain Russia have instead catalyzed the formation of a powerful coalition against them. The emerging Russia-China axis is a direct response to Western aggression and interference. As these two giants collaborate more closely, NATO's traditional tactics of sanctions and isolation appear increasingly ineffective. This new geopolitical reality demands a reassessment of strategies, but so far, NATO seems more intent on doubling down on failed policies. As the war drags on, the grim realities of prolonged conflict become ever more apparent. The human cost is staggering, with countless lives lost and entire communities devastated. The West's narrative of a noble struggle for democracy and freedom falls flat in the face of such overwhelming suffering. Western media may glorify the Ukrainian resistance, but the truth on the ground is far bleaker. 